Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do something mid-air. I'm going to switch to the Bluetooth speaker, so y'all will have to excuse me a second. It says that I'm connected, so we're going to be... It doesn't affect the audio, so you're getting a uh, heads up and a warning in advance. I did this video the other day. This is on the Redress Right channel. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a... It's free legal advice for Aquaman and what you should know. Aquaman had his house raided. Police went into his house. Uh, his wife was home. They still bust down the door. This is Aquaman right here. And they bust down the door, searched his house. And so Aquaman did a phone showing the police raid his house, break into his house. There have been a couple of attorneys to speak on this, and they say things like the uh, police have no right to uh, pop a lawsuit. You know what, Lato? Let's see what you have to say. We're not going to play all of Lato's law, but you know, I have Steve Lato. I have respect for Steve because Steve has been, in my opinion, accurate. He doesn't need my um, support or anything Once like that. Lato's law. This is I'm one of the turn craziest up the lawsuits I've ever heard about. Quite a few people sent this to me. Afro Man, who might be known to you as a musician who did a song called Because I Got High. It's a good song. Afro Man has of been sued by law like enforcement officers who raided his home. And they are suing him because during that raid, they were recorded by Afro Man's security cameras. So Afro Man later... And, 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 well, see, that's the one thing people don't know. It was Afro Man's security cameras, and I didn't notice at first either until I watched another attorney and his wife. So two cameras, but then they dis they attempted to disconnect his cameras. Ladies and gentlemen, why would the police, that's not part of the search warrant, so why would they disconnect his camera? But anyway, we won't talk about that. Uh, that pound cake that they talk about during the video, <laughs> if you listen to the whole song, you'll see that the officer took the pound cake. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that, that one. I'm sorry. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, the advice I gave, and I want, we're going to listen to Lato. We're going to see what advice he gives. The advice I gave was that the police have no privacy rights. They are acting in a public capacity. They have no privacy rights. They cannot expect to be private while operating in their official capacity. Each one of those officers were acting in their official capacity because if they weren't, that makes the search illegal. That's the first thing. So you go after them for operating in their official capacity and they have no perception of privacy while operating in their public capacity i.e. they have no right to sue him for publishing their being in public office. They're all public offices. They're under oath. They took an oath to protect the public, so they're operating in the public. Just that simple. Now, here's the thing. No, no, we're going to go by the rules. Go by the rules. The other attorneys are saying things like, uh, he didn't capture the face and all that, but yes, you can see the face of some of the officers, but you can't really identify them. But they're saying he put their likeness on television and all of that. He can do that. He didn't need their permission. They broke into his house. That's private property. They have no privacy rights in his home when it is obvious that they knew that there were cameras in the home. Yes, they knew. That's why they disconnected them. That's right, Mr. Alferman, you document the fact that they disconnected the cameras, identifying the fact that they knew that there was a camera system. There you go. They knew before they went into the home, because the cameras are not hidden. So they knew that there was cameras in the home, they knew there was cameras on the outside of the home. There was a search warrant. So they searched and they found them. So they have no privacy rights because it wasn't hidden. These are not hidden cameras. They were available for them to know because they took the time to disconnect them. I haven't really studied this case. I just knew what I saw on video. Let's see what Steve Leto 
says. Later took the opportunity to use footage from his own security cameras shot inside his own house and put those in the videos and TikToks and things like that. And the officers take umbrage with that, saying you can't use our likenesses in your videos. So they're suing him under an Ohio state law. And of course, the question is, were they really expecting privacy? In Hold on. Uh, I, 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 I haven't heard, Blake Y'all see me clicking on it for the first time. Let's see if I know what I'm talking about. Now, that's the first thing. But none of them are going to say it the way I said it. And if I was Mr. Afro Man, I would understand that that is your private home. They came in there and everything they did was for public purposes. That's the Fifth Amendment. No one's property may be seized or taken without just compensation. Once they hit that door, they were in charge and control of that door. He is due compensation because they were operating in a public capacity. You don't believe me? It's Mr. Latos who talks about the case in Texas where the woman got paid because the police said that they had qualified that man that tape. That's what I said in that video. But because all of a sudden that video is missing from my computer and I can't add it to the Eon channel, I'm doing the video again. And it is my hope that Mr. Afro Man will take listen and have his attorney bring these points up. I promise you they will settle. I would have countersued. Anytime anybody sues you, I don't care whose it is. Like my mama used to say, I don't give them, I don't care what's the number you got to pick up. You better pick it up and use it to defend yourself. Let me tell you something, Mr. Afro Man and all the rest of you, no matter what you have at your disposal and somebody sues you, you have at your disposal, pay attention, you have at your disposal, pay attention, the right to counter sue. Go over the Constitution. It gives you all the reasons you can counter sue for. All of those constitutionally secured rights that are violated. Fifth Amendment, Fourth Amendment, his two favorite ones. Okay? They were looking for a reason, and they didn't find anything. And the very fact that they did not find anything, and they were looking for other things other than what was on the search warrant, he can prove that this was a targeted search. And he can prove that the things that they were saying was because of his reputation of being a rapper and a person of color. Well, because rappers, they always keep women for ill-gotten gain and ill-gotten use and, you know, blah, blah, blah. R. Kelly, remember him? Yeah, right. Hold on, let's go. See, talk Inside to someone else's house. And by the way, <laughs> during that raid, they found nothing of, of importance, nothing. So, um, Afro Man, who's by the way, his real name is Joseph Edgar Foreman, uh, has been sued by law enforcement officers who raided his Wait, 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 hold on. He's the second person of non-color to highlight what his real name is. What the, does his real name have to do with anything, Lato? And the other attorney. His real name has nothing to do with anything. And why you want to do that to a person of color every single time makes no sense. He goes by Afro Man, and for the sake of these videos, his video is by Afro Man. It's not by his so-called real name. That is not his real name. I apologize. I take, I take exception to things like that because I think it's uncalled for. It has nothing to do with his real name. You think you're telling somebody a secret? So please stop that, people. Attorneys especially. He's the second one to do that. And he has no idea how offensive it is. If he wanted people to know his real name, he would have told them. He would have did the video under his real name. He did the video under his stage name. Whenever they speak of Jaja Gabor, people to this day, Jaja Gabor is called Jaja Gabor. They don't call her by her first name. She is no longer living. You don't, well, she was born. They like to do that to people, and that don't make no sense. It doesn't matter what she was born as, she's known as. He's known as Afro Man. Call the man Afro Man. Unless he says, no, it's okay. You can call me by my, my slave name. Sorry. I apologize. His house. Uh, he has promised to countersue for the undeniable damage this has had on my client's family, career, and property. Uh, Brian Planel wrote this. Hold on. Hey, y'all. He countersued. Praise the Lord. Praise. I told y'all. When you know what you're doing, when you know what you're doing, you gotta listen. Okay. 
that's why when I do consults, I give people more than seven reasons to protect themselves. I don't just do consults just telling you anything that anybody and their grandmama would say, but let's say, like I said, if Afro Man was sitting in front of me, these are the things that I would say to him. Let's see if the attorney, the ones who have been practicing law for so long, let's see if they agree. And like I said, I have a lot of respect for Mr. Latos. I don't know Steve Latos, but I promise you I've listened to Mr. Latos, and I agree with him all the time because he's on the money. I've not heard him once be off the money. He told you how bizarre this case was. I agree with him. But you turn the tables on the police by suing them and doing it under that Fifth and Fourth Amendment. You can bring up the other amendments, but definitely go after them for that unlawful search. Now, the attorneys will never tell you that they had a hearing. There was an affidavit and a witness testimony, and the prosecution was there. That's an illegal hearing. There is nothing in law that permits that. Nothing in law permits that without you receiving notice that they're having such a hearing. It doesn't matter if the person can escape or hide or elude. Or, that's not what the, the Constitution doesn't have nothing to do with that. The Constitution is written in stone, so to speak. And because it's written in stone, because it didn't account for that, they cannot amend it to say that. They must amend the Constitution. They cannot amend it in their own words and their statutes. Congress shall make no law. And they keep doing it. Let's continue. Steve? Uh, for WXIX, seven members of the Adams County Sheriff's Office who raided Joseph Foreman's home last year are now suing him, claiming, among other things, that he invaded their privacy. <laughs> you know, the bolder you are, the funnier it is. Wait, wait, hold on. Steve, let's see if you're going to say that police officers performing a public duty have no privacy rights, nor expectation of privacy. Supreme Court has said this numerous times. Let's see if any of the attorneys, because I haven't heard them say that yet. Go ahead and look up the, the phrase, police officers performing a public function have no expectation or expectance of privacy. Okay? I call it the law of expectation. The law of expectation created by me, invented by me. Law of expectation is whatever is supposed to happen is going to happen. If it's written to happen, it's supposed to happen. Okay? Expectation. If you walk out the door, you can expect to be outside of where you were. If you get in the car, turn on the ignition, put your foot on the gas, and if it's a functioning vehicle, it's going to have the engine rev, unless you put it in drive or in reverse. Got to put it in gear for it to do something. But once you put it in gear and everything else is working, you can expect it to do what you intended it to do, the law of expectation. So let's see what he says, because I'm expecting he's going to talk about privacy rights. They raided his house, found nothing but say he's invading their privacy. Four deputies, two sergeants, and a detective are claiming that Afro Man took footage of their faces obtained during the raid and used it in music videos and social media posts without their consent, which could be a misdemeanor under Ohio Revised Code, depending on how you look at it. Tell them about the exceptions. Do not skip the exceptions. There's always an exception. So that's what they claim it is, at least. They're also suing on civil grounds, saying that Foreman's use of their faces and their personas in the videos and social media posts resulted in their emotional distress, embarrassment, ridicule, loss of reputation, and humiliation. Plaintiffs say they're entitled to all of Foreman's profits from his use of the personas. That includes, according to the complaint, proceeds from the songs, music videos, and live event tickets, as well as the promotion of his Afro Man brand, under which he sells beer, marijuana, T-shirts, and other merchandise. They're also asking for an injunction to take down all the videos and posts containing their personas. A Cincinnati attorney filed a suit in Adams County Common Pleas Court on March 13th against Foreman, his recording firm, and a Texas-based media district. Hold on now. March 13th, and this is July, and the videos are still up? Oh, I guess they got that one, huh? Hold on. Distribution company. Not every law enforcement officer involved in the raid is named as a plaintiff. Some of them have common sense. Foreman on Wednesday posted on Instagram promising to counter sue for the undeniable damage this has had on him and his friends, etc. The sheriff's office conducted the armed raid 
of Foreman's Adams County home last August. Sheriff's deputies acted on a warrant. So they did have a warrant claiming that they'd find stuff on his property, uh, but they didn't. They didn't. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't know this was done four months ago. I just found out about this uh, a week ago. Well, actually, last week. And I did a video immediately after I saw it. Because it's the second celebrity that they have done something like this to that where I could see the wrong immediately. And so I speak out on it. So this was done four months ago. That's why he said back in March. So I'm already saying things that should have been done that they've already done. Okay, the countersuit and all that stuff. I'm saying stuff that they've already done. But this is exactly what I would have said to the young man had I had known about it at the time and somebody had come to me and asked about it, I would have said the exact same thing. Hold on. Like I said, I'm doing this as if it happened just yesterday. So let's let him continue. And as Afro Man said, they come up here with AR-15s, traumatize my kids, destroy my property, kick in my door, rip up and destroy my camera system. Now, why would they be ripping up his camera system while they're doing something completely legal? Because they keep saying we had a warrant. Did the warrant say you can go in and damage the guy's security system? Would the warrant really say that? The suspicions turned out to be... Ladies and gentlemen, I had a young man, his last name was Nugent, and I said, Mr. Nugent, what you need to do, the police turned his cameras, messed with his cameras. They had a search warrant, but the search warrant did not cover the cameras. So I told him they had no right to turn your cameras. That's your security system. That is for the protection of you and your home, and you have a right to protect yourself. That is a violation of the Fourth Amendment. I said, you need to highlight that. You need to go after the warrant. You need to go after the search because they were looking for something. Anything they find, you can kill the search warrant. You just have to attack the search warrant. I don't think he listened to me. I think he listened to an attorney tell him that he couldn't do that. You just heard Steve Lato said that they didn't have a right to do it because it wasn't in the search warrant. It had nothing to do with the search. If it had nothing to do with the search, that means they don't have the authority. It's not part of the search, and they cannot tie it into the search. The security camera system had nothing to do with the search. They weren't trying to pull old footage off of it because they didn't take the hard drive. If they were looking for old footage to see up there, because the camera's in the home, if they're looking for a kidnap victim, why not search the hard drive of the system? Afro man, remember what I just said. They didn't search the hard drive. They didn't take the hard drive, which means they weren't looking for kidnap victims. Kidnap victims, cameras inside the house, they know there are cameras inside the house, then they should be looking at the footage of the camera system. Too late now. It's the search is over. They no longer have a warrant to search his camera system. Four months gone by. They didn't do it, which means they weren't looking for a kidnap victim. Don't tell nobody. Let's continue. Unfounded. Adams County Prosecutor's Office said the raid failed to turn up probative criminal evidence, according to the attorney uh, working there. No charges were filed. They turned up no probative evidence, <laughs> and no charges were ever filed. Uh, in a bizarre turn of a... Ladies and gentlemen, probative means that they were pay attention on a witch hunt. They were looking for something. Intentionally looking for anything. See if they would have found a handgun or marijuana. Well, not even marijuana, but a handgun or some taxes. They took his money, people. And if he didn't have the cameras, they would have taken his money. He never would have seen it. Let's continue. Events unrelated to the civil suit. The sheriff's office appeared to come up hundreds of dollars short returning cash seized from Foreman's property. So it's a bizarre... Did I not just say exactly that? Man, I was a genius. I was a genius. I was a genius. I swear I was a genius. Turn of events unrelated to the suit because when the cops sued the man, they did not sue him for money that disappeared during the raid. And of course, why would they? Uh, but an independent investigation resolved the matter last month saying that deputies had simply miscounted the money during the raid. And so when the money came up short, that was actually the correct number. The correct number was the smaller number. Bigger number, miscounting. Months after the raid, Foreman published two songs referencing it. Lemon Pound Cake, and Will You Help Me Repair My Door? <laughs> Somewhere down the road, these will be in a folklore class being taught as classics.
Lemon Pound Cake and Will You Help Me Repair My Door. He also published accompanying music videos that include footage of the raid from his home surveillance cameras, as well as his wife's cell phone. The footage shows the faces of seven of the plaintiffs, according to the lawsuit. Complaint says that Foreman also created dozens of videos and images of plaintiffs' personas and posted them on various social media platforms, including Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat, TikTok, and Instagram. The complaint specifically cites seven Instagram posts, all of which have since been deleted. In one of them, according to the complaint, Foreman allegedly congratulated a law enforcement officer involved in the raid, saying, thank you for getting me 5.4 million hits on TikTok. I couldn't have done it without you. Congratulations again. You're famous for all the wrong reasons. The plaintiffs say they've been subjected to ridicule by people who saw Foreman's posts and that the posts have made it more dangerous for them to carry out their duties. They also claim they've endured death threats by anonymous members of the public who have seen some of the above-described postings. Um, Yeah, but the question is, number one, um, are you really saying that no one can photograph you while doing your job and show those photos to somebody else? Because that's not going to fly. Think about if this lawsuit is successful. Next time somebody sees police doing something and films it and then posts it someplace, they can get sued for that in Ohio if this lawsuit succeeds. And I can think of some cases where people filmed the police doing things that weren't that good. And when those uh, videos became public knowledge, um, things happened later as a result of that that wouldn't have happened if that film didn't exist. And so if you're trying to suppress people who are filming you doing your job, uh, that's not going to go very well, I don't think. So the complaint claims that Foreman continuously used the plaintiff's personas without their prior consent in a manner that is willful, wanton, malicious, and shows conscious or reckless disregard for their rights. I read the complaint. I went and read the lawsuit. And then I went and looked up the Ohio Revised Code, and I wanted to see what exactly it says that you can and cannot do with someone else's persona. And here is the thing. As you can imagine, as you walk down the street and someone sees you or someone films that scene of you walking down the street, you're part of a much bigger image, right? You're part of this big image. And the question is, at what point is it about you versus what is going on overall? And so if a bunch of armed police with a search warrant kick down your door to the point where you have to write a song called, Will You Help Me Repair My Door? And you're videotaping that, and you get the faces of the people who are doing this, along with everything else that's happening, and you then release those images of what happened. Is it really about the face of the person or everything that's happening there? So it does say a use of an aspect of an individual's persona in connection with any news, public affairs, sports, broadcast, or account does not constitute a use. Now, I didn't know about this law in Ohio, but it specifically mentions public affairs. These are public officers performing a public function, so they have no expectation of privacy. That's the key. For which consent is required. So if this qualifies as news, public affairs, sports broadcast, or account, it wouldn't qualify under this law, at least as far as the civil case goes. So the question is, was this news? <laughs> I would argue that it is. But I also went and looked for other exemptions, because sometimes there's more than one exemption. And I found another one that says, this chapter does not apply to any of the following. A literary work, dramatic work, fictional work, historical work, audiovisual work, or musical work, regardless of the media in which the work appears or is transmitted. So it does not apply to a musical work. And the question, of course, is I think these are songs that the man wrote and videos that are supporting those songs. But it also does not apply to material that has political or newsworthy value. Material that has political or newsworthy value. I assure you that what he filmed happening in his house is both political and newsworthy. And notice that the subsection is disjunctive, meaning it only needs to be one or the other, not both. If it's political, he wins. If it's newsworthy, he wins. Oh, material that has political or newsworthy value. There you go. Uh, So 
that is an exemption to this statute. So there's a bunch of other ones that probably apply, uh, but the real point is this. They can't forbid you from simply filming something that's happening and then displaying it to others as long as you're doing this from a place that you've got the right to be filming. And there's no question that you have the right to be filming inside your own house with your own security system. And think of the absurdity of it otherwise. Because if this stands... Hold on, hold on. There's a caveat, everyone. There's a caveat. They have to be made aware that they're being videotaped. That's why you see people post signs on private property that there are cameras. They have to be given notice that they are being videotaped just as much as a person has to be given notice of the possibility of being audio taped. Okay? Notice is a requirement before you can deprive anyone of their due process rights. And a burglar could break into your house and then sue you for releasing the images of their persona in Ohio what they're saying now they're saying well no 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 steve 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 people say steve 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 uh he's capitalizing on it though he's making money off of it so it's his property he still had the right to film it he's inside his own home and by the way think of the irony he says he got footage of them trying to disable his security cameras it's evident <laughs> and by the way he also apparently has footage of them miscounting his money um, evidence of a crime. It seems to me that if there's any argument that something is newsworthy or political evidence or of a crime. part of a musical work, uh, evidence of a crime. this would apply. So I don't know what will happen at trial evidence court level. Of a crime. Okay? I hope that Joseph Edgar Foreman or Afro Man has the uh, wherewithal to pursue this and take it up, meaning that go up on appeal if you got to, because this could not be good if it stood up this way trial by jury 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 definitely ask for a trial by jury okay because nobody wants their house to be broken into nobody wants their door to be knocked down and nobody wants the police to think they can get away with it there is no excuse there's no rhyme there's no reason if they're operating on taxpayers' dollars, then the taxpayers is responsible for the damage to the man's home. The police have insurance, sue the insurance company. The police have insurance, sue the insurance company. Because as you can imagine, there are a lot of people out there who see the police doing something and film them doing it. And all a police officer's got to do at that point is make sure his face is on camera one time. And then if that person puts it on YouTube, well, they've monetized it to put it on YouTube. So now they're, they're commercial gain or some nonsense. So... In case you're curious, by the way, the song was Because I Got High. It came out in 2001. That's the song he's best known for. And it's actually a very, very entertaining song. I like that song. Now, um, it's funny. Uh, it actually is anti-drug because he's talking about all the bad things that happened to him because he got high. And there's actually a funny story behind it. Uh, he recorded the song fairly low budget. No, oh, that's okay. I don't want to hear about him recording the song. This is all about somebody, the police breaking into the man's house. Yes, they broke into it because there was no crime. There was no probable cause. There was nothing there. Remember, they surprised and showed, surprise! Okay? If they were truly looking for a crime, they know that the camera systems contain a hard drive. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. The police officers, this is not their first rodeo. They know that the camera system contains a hard drive, which has a copy of all the footage recorded by those cameras. They know that, and it does as much as a month worth of recording. One full month. I hope you all are understanding what I'm saying. Impossible for them to be looking for what they claimed they were looking for when they had all the evidence in the camera system that they dismantled. That shows you that they were not looking for no victims. They were hoping to find something. This was not their first rodeo. They never checked the camera system. See, I didn't know all these details about the camera system. But then I just thought about it while Latos was talking. Steve, thanks, Steve. 
All right, Steve just helped us out, y'all. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. Like I said, Steve, all right, guy, in my book. Ladies and gentlemen, again, as I said, they're not going to talk about them having a due process hearing without giving Afroman due process. There was a hearing, judge, witness, testimony, and the prosecution. That's an ex parte hearing. Supreme Court says a person has the right to a hearing prior to being subject to any deprivations of a significant due process right. So what am I trying to say here? Ladies and gentlemen, I've been doing this for too long, been studying cases. I didn't have to go to somebody's stupid law school to know what I know. What I had to do was I had to understand the basic principles of law. What are those basic principles? Well, it's quite simple. The law is very simple, ladies and gentlemen. It is based on the Ten Commandments that are in Scripture and the book of Leviticus. That's what your laws are based on, those principles. Remember, they were trying to follow the Jewish Torah when they came over here. And so their laws are governed by that. There were no so-called atheists at the time because those are not the people who came here. The original people who came here were the quote-unquote Christians. They're the ones who paid for passage because of the persecution they were receiving over in Europe, i.e. the United Kingdom. Okay? Just get it so that you understand it. So they based their modeled laws according to Scripture. So once you understand that's the foundation of all law, now you can handle that foundation. Most people don't know how to handle that foundation. But once they learn, they can get it done. Sorry, I am looking at my camera system right now. I ain't Afro man, but I got my camera system, and it's nighttime, and I'm watching the vehicles come down the road and travel down my road. And let's see if he's going to keep going. Yeah, he kept going. All right. Well, because there's been, my road, there's no traffic. But there's been some traffic tonight. And I've been kind of curious as to why there was traffic this night of all night. Traffic. And so that's why I have a camera system, people. That's how I know that the camera system records and has a hard drive in it. The police know the same thing because that's what they've used before to convict people. It's those hard drives. Don't even let me get to you about them using photos as evidence against the person. Okay, you can't, never mind, we're not going to get into that. There, there is a whole issue of using photos and cameras to take pictures of this and take pictures of that. Like I said, we ain't going to get into that because that will be a long conversation, and we don't need to be having that conversation, not right now. You know what I'm saying, Vern? All right, so with that conversation, let us, Go ahead and leave you guys to your day. As I said, I go over cases all the time. I see things all the time, and I speak up on things. There was a guy, a truck driver, who the police were stopping him because he didn't have a mud flap on his tractor trailer. A mud flap. It wasn't even raining. So they were trying to pull him over, and the guy didn't stop because what? He did not want to just simply stop. He's in the middle of nowhere, probably going to head to an exit where it was crowded. He didn't trust the police. He had a good reason for not trusting the police because while he's got his hands up and he's following the so-called commands of the officer, another officer comes and lets the, who let the dogs out and allows the dog to maul the man, not to death, but enough to where you can see the lacerations on his arm and they still had him handcuffed, despite those lacerations, telling him that nobody wants to hurt you. And the guy says, you suck, suck your dog out on me. What do you mean you're not trying to hurt me? I had the dog biting him and everything. He's out of jail. Got himself an attorney. Good job. And now you go after the officers. No, 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 no. You don't just go after him for a little bit. You go after him for a lot of it. Because they did not try to stop the dog. The guy was told, do not let the dog, get control of the dog, do not let the dog, who let the dogs out? He's got his hands up. That's what they're shouting. 
ladies and gentlemen, they're shouting. He's got his hands up. Do not release the dog. Do not release the dog. Now, I want you guys to understand something. Police dogs are illegal, especially if they bite a human. The saliva in a dog's mouth has bacteria in it that can cause an infection and lead to the death of a person. But you didn't know that, did you? So releasing a dog on a person is tantamount to attempted murder. Don't take my word for it. Go ahead and look at the saliva and the bacteria in the saliva of a dog. People say, well, saliva, it's antibacterial. No, it is not. The saliva in a dog, when a dog bites, has bacteria in it that is designed to attack. That's why they do it, people. It's by nature, not by anything else. So when the police release a dog on somebody and they break skin, they are attempting to commit murder. Why? Because they know that it could lead to infection and death. Don't take my word for it. Go ahead and see an attorney use that as a defense in the future. That's what I do. I get just as technical as they get. There is no such thing. Do you guys know why they use police dogs? Because the slaves, the spook hunters, spook hunters used dogs to chase down runaway slaves. Bloodhounds. That's why police use dogs. Because police is the spook hunter. That's their history. That's where a police department comes from. If you don't believe police departments are racist, then you don't know nothing about the police department and how they got started. Do your research on where police departments came from. Now, am I saying police men are racist? No. I'm saying the foundation of a police department is racism. That's where it got started. Remember, United States, there was never any law allowing individuals to have slaves. I told you, the United States is a corporation. Don't believe me? Don't go looking at no 28 U.S.C. 3002. Pull up their EIN number. Pull up their comprehensive annual financial report. That proves they're a corporation. And once you prove they're a corporation, and you can document that the corporation has been in existence since the time of slavery, the Act of uh, February 21st, 1871, it's called the 1871 Act, that's when it was formed and created a corporation. Before that, it was still a corporation, but just not a formal corporation. That's the corporation that allowed the idiots to do what they did. And George Washington himself was the president of a corporation, Georgetown and Washington Town. Those were his two incorporated cities. You don't believe me, do you research, people? Why do you think it's called Washington? Why do you think it was called Georgetown? George Washington Town. Don't take my word for it. Go back and look at the so-called Act of 1871, February 21st, 1871. Why do you think President's Day is on February 21st? Come on now, people. Y'all supposed to know this stuff. All right. February 21st is not the celebration of No Stupid President's Day. February 21st is the celebration of the corporation because that was the President's Day. This is the president is the CEO of the corporation, people. If you guys only understood all of the Masonic traditions and all of that and exactly what February 21st symbolizes, go do your research. Got to go, okay? All right, I just want to take a time tonight before I lay me down to sleep so that I could get this information out about Alpha Man because, again, I, did, I thought this case was recent, and it wasn't. But anyway, my hope is that the information gets across to him because if he does it right, they will settle. They, they, won't, they cannot afford to take this to trial. The officers who are not suing use them to testify against their fellow officers. De- depose them, mother. Okay? They're going to lie. They have to lie to protect each other. You see, the officer took the money and put it inside his vest. You can see it in the film. And then the money is missing? It's not your word against theirs, because guess what? You can show he took it. You can show he put it in his vest. That's not where the money goes. What if it has fingerprints on it? He's got gloves on. That should have went in the bag. It should have been counted as evidence. 
should have went in an evidence bag, but it didn't go in an evidence bag. He should have taken it out of whatever it was in and called the other officer who was in charge of collecting and had them put it in a bag. But that officer put it in his pocket, and I guarantee you, Afro man, that officer has been accused and his team has been accused of taking money before. So you use that as evidence against the officer. Depose that mother. Yes, 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 I know. That's why they want to hire me all the time as a consultant. I don't want to be a consultant for anybody's law firm. I don't want to be a consultant for any lawyer. I don't want to work with a law firm. I don't want any of that. I do this as a side gig, so to speak. This is not what I do for a living. Technically, I can't stand the law because it's bastardized. They, the law itself, please, this ain't, this junk ain't law. This is not how law is. This is these idiots changing it whenever they feel like it. Every single court comes up with an excuse or a technicality. The law is not written on technicalities, everybody. But you use technicalities, you better believe it, do to them as they do to me. That's not a rule. Yes, it is. It's my rule. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank all of you for joining me. My hope is some of you, one of you, possibly knows the young man. Get it across to him. Tell him what I'm suggesting. Tell him to come here and take a look. Tell him to take a look. Tell him, I guarantee you, something that I've just said will benefit him, especially the thing about questioning the officer and going and looking at that officer's record, the one who took the money. I guarantee you that officer who took the money, guarantee you that he has a prior record and that team has a prior record of taking people's money. They do it all the time. They do it all the time. I've seen it, people. I saw the wire. No, I'm, I've seen it in actual reality. I told you, I specifically was a participant in a lawyer paying off a judge, a prosecutor, and himself to get rid of a case, to make the case go away with prejudice. It went away with prejudice, so I ain't got to worry about it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the game. And if y'all don't get into it and understand the game and how the game is played, then y'all are going to keep getting in trouble and y'all going to keep getting going through this. So, like I said, two cases, the guy who got mauled by the dog, go after them. And notice that that guy who released that dog, he's been accused of doing the same thing before. See, if you did it, my mother used to say, if you do it at home, I know you do it at school, so don't come in here telling me nothing. That was her, her, her favorite word. If you do it at home, you do it at school. Basically, all she was saying is that you're a creature of habit. If that is your M.O., then don't come in here and tell me that you did something other than your M.O. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that idiot let that dog go and didn't listen to nobody. That means he's done it before. He received several commands from a superior, and he ignored it. He came to the scene last after everybody and still let the dog go. After being told deliberately over and over and over, he disobeyed the command of a superior, and he didn't even get suspended because of the color of his skin. Don't take my word for it. That idiot knows somebody or has been on the force for so long that he knows dirt on somebody. So they didn't suspend him. Ladies and gentlemen, you disobey the, the direct order of a superior, you're supposed to be disciplined. He did not get disciplined. And somebody suffered an injury, and they didn't do anything. So there's going to be a settlement. The guy is out of jail. There's going to be a settlement. They're going to threaten him. Well, we can fine you for this. We can charge you for that. Go ahead and charge me. Fine me. Because we're going to trial on this. That's my response. You want to play with me? You want to threaten me? Well, let me threaten you with attempted murder. Ladies and gentlemen, he was unarmed. They released that dog. That dog could have punctured an artery. Pay attention. Look at where his wounds are. That's what they teach the dog. The dog could have punctured an artery. If the dog would have punctured an artery, he could have bled to death right there at the scene because the officers weren't trying to stop the dog. The officer who released the dog has a command that he can give the dog to stop the dog immediately. Make the dog act like he's a little puppy, and he didn't do it. So go after them for attempted murder. I would. What have you got to lose? What have you got to lose? Sue the state? 
to the county, to the city. You were in each and every jurisdiction at that time. You sued the highway patrol, you sued the state troopers, you sued the city because everybody was there. You sued them all because they had a duty. Pay attention. They had a duty. Go back and look at George Floyd. The officers had a duty to prevent that situation from happening. And saying, don't release the dog, that dog should have been killed. The dog should have been shot. The dog should have been killed. The dog should have been shot. Don't care if you consider him to be an officer. You told the officer, don't release the, release the dog. Remember, officers kill dogs all the time because they perceive a threat to their safety and their life. That dog should have been shot the same way as they would have shot your dog if your dog was off a leash. And they did not do it, and it led to bodily injury and bodily harm. So please, I do this for a living. This is what I gather from just hearing about cases. I don't even know the details of any of these cases, people. And as I get more and more details, then there is more and more information. Now, I, I will say this. For the time being, I am continually capable of doing consults, but it's about to come to an end. I'm not running out of energy, but I don't want to run out and be able to go, I don't know what I'm doing about. <laughs> I don't want to get to that point. I want to give people information as best I can for the time being, but eventually I'm not going to be able to give them that information. Eventually I'm not going to be able to give people information. Eventually I'm not going to be able to do the consult. So there's a young lady. She said she was taking advantage of it right now, and I don't blame her because that's what I would do. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I am going to leave y'all to y'all day. I know I said that 15 minutes ago, but hey, it was entertainment, was it? Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Got to go. Uh, I don't get high, but I'll give you a piece of pound cake because I got some sitting on the counter right here. I'm saying going to take that one because I ain't leaving it out there for him to take. All right. Take care, everybody. You stole the man's pound cake.